What a lot of people do not know is that the Department of the Department of Justice, the DOJ, this is their building behind us right here, the Dirksen Federal Building. The Department of Justice opened up a federal civil rights probe into the shooting into the shooting murder of Laquan McDonald. They never they never filed charges on Jason Van Dyke. Say that ain't right. Say that ain't right. We're demanding on tonight that U.S. Attorney John Lawsh, the Department of Justice, that they file civil rights charges on Jason Van Dyke and they hold him accountable for the shooting and murder of Laquan McDonald on October 20th, 2014. So we want that now. We want that now. So we want that now. We want that now. We're going to bring up some speakers. We're going to talk about other issues on why we out here, about the social inequities in our, in our community. How this white man, this white police officer, murdered somebody in cold blood on camera. And he was only sentenced to 81 months. He can possibly be, possibly be released from prison after only three and a half years. Say, that's shysty. That's shysty. Then on the other hand, you have other African Americans. Such as such as uh, Mr. Larry Hoover, who spent his six consecutive life sentences in prison, in federal prison, on 23 and one lockdown, and don't have any human contact. Hasn't had any human contact in 25 years. Say that ain't right. Say that ain't right. So you telling me my federal government elect won't hold this white officer accountable for shooting this black boy, but will hold this man in, in prison under the jail? for six consecutive life sentences that he can't even touch his family, he can't touch his son, he can't touch his wife, he can't touch his grandkids, that's not right, so that ain't right. We're gonna draw attention to that. We're gonna raise a campaign tonight. This campaign start now. If you've been in a campaign before, whether it was fighting for justice for Laquan McDonald, getting Anita Alvarez ousted, getting Gary McCarthy ousted, getting Romney Manu out, we did that. We ran campaigns before. This is a campaign that we're going to start tonight. And all of us together, we're going to get this accomplished. Say, so let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, we got some dope dynamic speakers that's coming up. We're going to talk. I'm going to let them talk. Each speaker, since we got so many, man, y'all try to keep it under five minutes. Three to five minutes. What? All right, they said two minutes. I'm going to give y'all grace and pull three. I'm pulling rank, all right? So three minutes. <laughs> say what y'all got to say. Let the most high lead three, lead lead y'all to say whatever y'all gotta say. First person that's gonna come up is my boy Maxwell for demand justice. Y'all make some noise for him. Make some noise. Come on, come in some more. Come in some more. Hey, bring it out in. Come in, come in. All right. When I say demand, y'all say justice. Demand justice. Demand justice. When I say demand, y'all say justice. Demand justice. Demand justice. All right. When I say police need, and then y'all know what to finish with. Police need. Police need. Police need. Police need. All right. Thank y'all. I'm Maxwell M. K.'s demand justice. And the point that I wanted to make is the fact that Van Dyke is one of many. Laquan is one of many. And we're not going to stop with just Van Dyke. And we're not going to stop with just Laquan. Right here is a list, and I was counting, and this has about 36 to 38 names of other victims, just like Laquan, that were killed. And unfortunately, it takes one of us being slaughtered, slaughtered on tape, for there to be a little bit of sympathy. But we're not going to be fooled with what they try to do with Van Dyke. There's over 38 names here. In 2015, there's an article that shows 92 names police officer related killings. Let me borrow from my man and say, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. Demand. Demand. Justice. Justice. Demand. Demand. Justice. Justice. We're doing this for Laquan and the many other Laquans. We're standing up against Van Dyke and the many other Van Dykes out here. So one last time. Demand. Demand. Justice. Police need. Police need policing. That's it. Make some noise. Thank you all for coming out. My name is Dr. LaShawn Latrice from Make Noise for Change. I stand with my comrades today because we are celebrating life of Laquan McDonald.
but it happens to be coincidentally the day that they try to confirm Rahm Emanuel. We right. are standing here traumatized because we cannot believe the administration ran by Joe Biden would have the audacity and to put up a nomination for Rahm Emanuel after he covered up the murder of Laquan McDonald. So we're standing here right now together letting the world know that we are not going to sit silently and let this clown Rahm get confirmed, but we're going to make all the noise we can. So make some noise right now. How many shots? Sixteen shots. How many shots? Sixteen shots. We gotta bring up our next speaker, who is Jamal Cole. Come on up, comrade. For my make black, my whole my city, y'all make some noise for Cole. Hey, I want to start off by saying, um, you know, having a police badge gives you a platform that's gonna amplify who you are. So, if you're a good person. I feel like if you're a good person, having a police badge gives you a platform that's going to amplify your ability to do good. If you're a bad person, having a police badge gives you a platform that's going to amplify your wickedness. I said that line for the last six years in Chicago. Even after my aunt, Betty Jones, was murdered by a Chicago police officer. Her name is right here. She was murdered on the morning after Christmas by a Chicago police officer. They said it was by accident. I went on CNN the next morning. What did I say? Having a police blah, 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 blah. Having a police badge gives you a platform to amplify your wickedness, right? And listen, I've been pulled over in Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Oklahoma, and Nebraska. Every time I got stopped, I didn't know if I was going to die. In Nebraska, a cop pulled me over, put me in the back seat of a car, put me in handcuffs, and then he drove like a maniac through a cornfield. I bounced around the back seat like a rag doll. He pulled up to a big barn and two dogs came out. He said he left something inside. An hour later, he came back outside and said, he took me to the police station. That's KKK behavior. That's not police officer behavior. Hey, that's not a new story. That happens to a lot of black men. I, I talked to a lot of black men that have been beat up in these poor fields, right? I'm here today to talk about the consent decree. The consent decree is a federal court order that establishes an enforceable plan for reform because the Chicago Police Department has been found guilty of targeting black and brown people in 2018. I'm not talking about back in the day when the Texas Rangers used to kill Mexican ranchers. They, the white colonists used to steal the Mexican ranchers' cattle. The, the, the colonists would call the police, the Texas Rangers, they'd show up and kill everybody. I'm talking about 2018, they was found guilty. In this consent decree, this, this federal plan for reform, they offer eight hours of diversity training. It's optional diversity training for cops. As if eight hours of diversity training can wipe away thousands of years of racist policing. That don't make no damn sense. And think about it, if you was training to be a pilot, and it was mandatory that you had a thousand hours of training to be a pilot, you wouldn't spend only eight hours trying to land a plane. That don't make no sense, man. The situation is too important. What I want to know is what's happening in these crisis intervention trainings, specifically around the properly de-escalating situations. What's happening on that part? And y'all, to me, I feel like the de-escalation process should start when the officer gets out the vehicle. Your uniform is affecting me. The way your uniform looks is affecting me. You look like a Texas Ranger right now. You look like a Call of Duty officer right now. You say you're here to cover me for peace. Hey, listen, how come it's always on the black people? We got to de-escalate the situation. We got to say, hey, my hands are at 10 to 2. I'm reaching for my wallet. That responsibility should be on the person that's paid to serve the public. It's not clear that the police knows that they, their job is to serve the public. And hey, why are you so mad at me? You signed up for this job. You, you signed up for this job and you mad at me. Right? I'm just asking you to humble yourself when you pull me over. You should treat me like a person when you pull me over. How would you treat your sister if you pulled your sister over? How would you treat your mother if you pulled your mother over? Right? You look like a Texas Ranger right now. How come y'all didn't know Jason Van Dyke was guilty? He had over 20 complaints. Y'all should have known he was capable of murder. And there's a lot more people just like him. A lot more people just like this. And this whole consent decree, y'all, this 300-page document, the police officers never admit to any wrongdoing. The police never take accountability for their failed systems. That's why that entire document should burn. The entire document should burn. Listen, my name is Jamal Cole. Yeah, I run a nonprofit called My Block, My Hood, My City. Well, I ain't talking about nonprofit organizations right now. I could pass out turkeys for the rest of my life, but people still gonna be hungry on the 28th or 29th. I'm running for U.S. Congress in the first district of Illinois, and we ain't giving no money to police officers until they actually make these trainers mandatory. We're not giving no money.
police officers. We're not giving them no money for military or great equipment. They say they don't got. I was in the rallies downtown when Lori opened up the gates. I saw they, I saw the eyes of the police officers. I saw the tattoos. I saw the etchies in the billy clubs. Y'all was throwing smoke bombs at us, man. Talking about y'all don't have military great equipment. Why are those trainers so optional? Those trainers should be mandatory, man. I'm Jamal Cole. I'm running for U.S. Congress in the first district of Illinois, and I'm about that action, man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jamal, thank you. Mic check, mic check, how many shots? 16 shots. How many shots? 16 shots. Let's hear from our comrade, Kofi. Come on up, Kofi, give him a round of applause. Let's go, Kofi. Come on. Come on. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is a somber evening. This isn't a, a night for me to be loud and passionate, so forgive me, because uh, I'm not in a good space right now. Y'all know Chicago is the torture capital of the world. Y'all know that, right? Y'all know John Burge and his team. And we, we got survivors of that. Shout out to Brother Mark. Yeah. Over 150 people incarcerated off of false confessions, y'all. Huh? We know we live in a city where Fred Hampton and Mark Clark were killed in their sleep, right? We know that, right? Shout out to Chair Chairman Fred Hampton Jr. over there. Huh? We know we live in a city where this department has killed more children than any other department in the country. Y'all know that, right? So, I say all that to say that I'm not up here to talk to y'all about reform or some kind of policy to pass. I'm here to say I'm an abolitionist. I, I want to see these prisons and police go, period. Like, there, there's nothing in the system where justice is, is, is laying. We live in a nation of mass incarceration that happened during slavery, during Reconstruction, during Jim Crow, during the so-called civil rights movement to right now. Millions of black and brown bodies stacked on top of each other. Where's the justice in that? Huh? It's an economic thing. They lock our bodies away because their labor niche needs to be taken care of. It's profit of the people, right? They invest millions and in, I'm sorry, billions into policing and prisons. They invest trillions into the military into complex, industrial complex, right? We can drop bombs over another nation and incarcerate black and brown people here. So I just say all that to say, justice for the crime for me looks like freeing Larry Hoover. Right? Justice for the crime for me looks like freeing Maria. Right? Justice looks like freeing all political prisoners. Justice looks like freeing my cousin who's doing 10 years in the federal penitentiary right now. Justice looks like making sure young brothers and sisters like this don't have to be locked up, right? Because we need repair, we need healing, right? We need resources to build a structure of true transformative justice. Putting people in cages does not keep us safe. It does not keep us safe, y'all. Putting people in cages does not make them get redemption. People build redemption on their own means because they feel remorse. But the criminal justice system pays to lock them up instead of healing those people that have been harmed. Money should go to us survivors. Money should go to us victims, right? We should be putting all our resources into healing people, repairing people, and holding people accountable. Instead, you get put in front of the state that gives you this ridiculous sentence and puts you away in a cage where you never have the ability to make uh, amends and uh, have atonement for the harm that you've done. That's the system we live in. So I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm not going to tell you none of that. I'm just going to tell you, we got to have all power to the people. we got to continue to build power and put that power and resources into our communities. And what they define as crime, I call rebellion. What they call a riot, I call it insurrection. So let's not, let's not go there with what they're talking about as far as what is legitimate, right? That's not what I'm going to be up here for. These young brothers, they're part of Good Kids Mad City. They're doing violence prevention work in this city. They're doing things to keep build peace and keep safety happening in the community. But they can't do that with police in the streets. It's just not going to happen. The same officers who won't get a damn vaccination, right, or quit over that, but they get $1.9 billion 
of at this upcoming budget hearing. One, that's almost $2 billion. We have more police per capita than any other country. So that's all I got to say, y'all. Abolish police. Fuck everything else. Y'all make some noise for Kofi real quick. How many shots? 16 shots. How many shots? 16 shots. How many shots? 16 shots. Hey. It's a hashtag I really when we leave when we leave here, it's a hashtag I really want y'all to pump. Right? Until further notice. Say reject. Reject. Wrong. Wrong. Say reject. Reject. Wrong. Wrong. As Le Dr. LaShawn er said earlier so eloquently, I don't know if everybody peeped it. On today, on Laquan McDonald's death anniversary, the United States Foreign Relations Committee thought it was a good idea to bring Rahm Emanuel into a U.S. Senate hearing to possibly to confirm him as a U.S. ambassador to Japan. Say that ain't right. That ain't right. Say that ain't right. that ain't right. So he fell our city. He covers up the murder of a 17-year-old boy. He closed 50 schools on the south and west side. He closed, he closed mental health clinics throughout the city of Chicago. The highest level of poverty and unemployment in the black community. Lead water was found in our shorty schools. So you think that's the best qualified candidate to go represent the United States as an ambassador? Mm. Say that ain't right. That ain't right. On top of that, they chose today out of all days to have that Senate hearing. That's not coincident coincidental, beloved. That was intentional. Say that was intentional. That was that was, that was intentional because they know what Laquan means to us. They know what this day means to us. This is why we have to start organizing politically because that was a Democratic president that thought it was okay to put Point Rahm Emanuel as a U.S. ambassador. That wasn't Donald Trump. That wasn't a Republican. That was a Democrat who thought that was okay. We need to start organizing our own political power and start using our political muscle in a way that we need to. Yeah. Period. Yeah. That's what we have to do. If politics ain't for you, then politics ain't for you. But as long as you live in the United States of these America, we're going to have to exercise that strength. Say, exercise that strength. Exercise that strength. Say, flex that muscle. Flex that muscle. And that's what we're going to continue to do. With that being said, we need to have a new bread of leadership. A new bread to go in D.C. and represent people like us. People that's going to walk into the U.S. Senate and say, no, nah, this mom can't be, he can't be no ambassador. I'm not no senator, but this mom can't be that. We need bold leadership. We need radical leadership. We need leadership that people can believe in. I don't have any leadership that I can believe in. I don't have anybody in my black community that's an elected official that I can believe in. When I go in South Shore, I don't have anybody that I can believe in. We are who we've been waiting for. Da Danny, da Danny Davis has failed us. Bobby West has failed us. The Chicago Black Caucus has failed us. I walked in the block, I walked in City Hall by myself and watched every single person in the city council floor. Okay, unanimously, a FOP contract that gives the police the power to kill us with impunity. I watch every single black elected official in the city of Chicago for the exemption of Jeanette Taylor because she wasn't there. But every single one, Jason Irvin, Leslie Harrison, Sophia King, Emma Mitch, David Moore, all of them. It's time for us to pick a side. It's time for us to pick a side politically. These people have been selling us out forever. It's time for us to pick a side. It's time for us to raise up new political leadership. Jamal's running. Let's lift him up. If he get in there tweaking, we're going to hold him accountable. The next person that's coming up, we're going to lift her up. If she get in there and start tweaking, we're going to hold her accountable. But I vouch for them. I put my name on the line for them, period. I don't play with this. I do not play with anybody touching this mic. I vouch for everybody touching this mic. With the next person coming up, man, y'all lift up a black woman, love our community, been in the trenches with us since day one, running for Congress on the west side. Y'all make some noise for Kenny Collins one time. Make some noise. If we don't get it, shut, shut it, it down. down. If we don't get it, shut, shut it down. down. If we don't get it, shut, shut it down. down. If we don't get it, shut, shut it down. Now y'all can do better than that.
If we don't get it, shut it down. Let CPD hear you. If we don't get it, shut it down. My name is Keena Collins. I'm running for Congress in the Illinois 7th Congressional District. We're standing in my district right now. We're standing in what we know is a tale of two cities in the city of Chicago. I'm from the Austin neighborhood on the west side of Chicago. And here we are downtown in one of the wealthiest parts, not just in Illinois, but in the country. This was our ground zero for Laquan McDonald when we went to the Magnificent Mile and shut it down and exercised our constitutional right to an economic boycott. And I said this yesterday, we know shutting down shopping plazas, shutting down federal plazas, shutting down the highways is an inconvenience, but so is 400 years of white supremacy and oppression. That is also an inconvenience. Say it is also an inconvenience to shoot our children down in the street and gun them down like animals and conceal the murder. It is also an inconvenience to shut down 50 schools in our community. It is also an inconvenience when you pour more into over-militarizing our neighborhoods than investing in the education of our young people. Now, I want to call out the Black Caucus and City Council. Come on now. How dare they? And how dare that how dare we? And shame on us if we let them get away with this. I'm not surprised and I'm not shocked that they endorse Rahm Emanuel. I'm sorry, y'all. Because these are the same people that voted for a $95 million cop academy. These are the same people who stood with him when they shut our schools down. These are the same people who agreed to shut down every mental health facility in this city. These are the same people who are letting lead be pumped through our faucets. So I am not shocked and surprised at all. Now, when we talk about running for Congress and our House Party leadership, where was anybody in the Illinois delegation to say this is wrong and rebuke the actions of what happened? Please let me know which co Congressional Black Caucus member came out, which Progressive Caucus member came out and said that Rom should not be getting this appointment. Not one person. Our organizing does not go down in vain. And while we have elected officials on our Capitol kneeling and draping pente cloth around their necks, and, and passing Juneteenth as a federal holiday, we don't want symbolic victories. We want systematic change. Yeah. We don't want your thoughts and prayers. We want policy and implementation. Yeah. We want y'all to run the bag. We need reparations for our community. Yeah. We need you to stop and end the war on drugs on the west side and south side in Flint, Michigan, and New Orleans, all across this country. And so I'm with Kofi on this. I got a little loud, but today was very, very difficult for me. We have to inject some humanity into what has happened here in the city of Chicago. Laquan wasn't just murdered. Laquan wasn't just killed. He was lynched. And they hid his tape for 400 days. On his anniversary, Rahm Emanuel sat in front of the, the Senate hearing today and lied. And lied. He lied. Reverend Hunter, you're wrong. You're wrong for saying that you're going to speak on behalf of the dead who can't speak for themselves. The Black Caucus and the City Council, you're wrong. You don't speak for the working class people across the city of Chicago that have been invisible to the elected officials. But what we do know, I seen Chairman Fred Hampton Jr. in here. Fred Hampton told us, y'all can jail a revolutionary, you will never be able to jail a revolution. We here, we planted the seeds, and we're going to continue to organize. My name is Keena Collins, and I'm running for Congress in the Illinois 7th Congressional District. Thank you. Make some noise for Keena Collins! If we don't get it, 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 make some noise for our comrade Shabir who will be joining us on the stage. Come on up, Shabir. My name's Shabir. I'm with the Party for Socialism and Liberation. In a just world, Laquan McDonald would be here today. In a just world, Someone who shoots someone, a cop who shoots someone in the back, would be facing a lot more years than just seven years. 
and that just will, the cop will unload 16 shots at a 17-year-old boy, would not be up for parole in seven years. In a just world, a mayor who attempted to cover up the murder of a 17-year-old child would be met with disgust everywhere he showed his ugly face. But we do not live in a just world because Laquan McDonald was killed by the same police department that takes our money and our resources year after year while they, while they oppress us, while they shoot us in the streets. And now the Democrats, the Biden administration is offering that same mayor who participated in a cover up, a cover up, a federal job where now he gets to cover up for the US imperialist machine because you know why? Because Rahm Emanuel is part of the democratic war machine, part of the capitalist machine. McCormick should be here. Anthony Alvarez should be here. Adam Toledo should be here. Yes. And they're trying to make us forget that hearing today, it was no coincidence because they're trying to whitewash what Rahm Emanuel did to this city, what Rahm Emanuel did to Laquan McDonald. But we remember our history. Though we might not remember 2014 as vividly as we remember summer of 2020, 2014 was the same year where Mike Brown was killed. It was the same year where Eric Garner was killed. We were already all angry in these very streets marching. That was the same year where Mayor Rahm Emanuel was seeking re-election. And thousands of us in the street marching, demanding justice, got a FOIA request out where that video came out and Rahm Emanuel's approval rating sank to 18%. Say that with me, 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%. 18%.
This is what we fight for. If it weren't for the movement, if it weren't for all those who marched, sat in, demonstrated, rallied, you wouldn't have anything at all. But I want you to know something. The democratic machine, the whole machine, the whole political capitalist establishment, they're waiting for us to pack it up and go home. They're waiting for us to put down the placards. They're waiting for us to put down the banners. They're waiting for us to just go to the bar, to just go play football, to go just watch football. They're waiting for us to be distracted so they can continue to oppress us. Are we going to give them that? No. Are you going to stay in the street? No. Yes. Are you going to keep fighting? Yes. Yeah. That was weak. Are you going to keep fighting? Yes. Yeah. We remember our history. Don't let them curtail us. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shabir. I would like to inform you all about a killing, a murder that took place in Dalton. So those of you who have never heard the name Alexis Wilson, repeat after me. Justice for Alexis Wilson. Justice for Alexis Wilson. Justice for Alexis Wilson. Okay, when it comes to our black women and our black girls, it seems like it doesn't matter when they're murdered, so we don't talk about it often. But I'm going to talk about it right now. For those of you who watch the news and believe whatever the media says, believe it or not, there's another story, the real story. And we're going to make some noise for Alexis Wilson. I want all you all to put your fists in the air and say justice for Alexis Wilson. Justice for Alexis Wilson. She was killed on July 27th in Dalton. She was murdered by Officer Ryan Perez and Jared Carlton, and some of our comrades who were out there fighting was arrested illegally for exercising their First Amendment right to protest by the Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyer. And we put on blast too. So anybody who is not aware, come see me after and I'll educate you. Next on the schedule we got Alita, my yeah. sister. She's about to come up here and make some noise. Make some noise for Alita. First, I just want to say it's a blessing that we are gathered out here to support each other, to fight together, and not to be fighting each other. Shout out to Will Calloway for continuing to fight for Laquan McDonald. So much as even going to Springfield to get a law passed in Laquan McDonald's honor. And shout out to everybody who's always been a part of that campaign, fighting for justice for Laquan McDonald. You know, one thing, one thing about everything that's going on, in Chicago and all over the world. I'm never, I'm never, I'm never surprised when a liar lies, when a thief steals, those type of things don't surprise me. What surprises me is after situations like this, when we all out here gathered together, this does not continue. That's what surprises me. The same fight that everybody that's out here right now has, we need to stop letting that fire die. We have strength in numbers. We have strength in we have strength in numbers. We have strength in prayer, and we have strength in actually being foot on the ground doing the work. There's too many people at home complaining about how bad everything is, and it's not enough people willing to hold themselves accountable for the things that's going on in our city and our community. I'm not just gonna continuously blame these elected officials. They don't care. Being elected was just an easy job for them to get an easy dollar. The hard work is up to us. I live by my five P's. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. And if we are not properly prepared for this fight, we're going to fail. I just don't understand how an officer, Jason Van Dyke, caught on camera, killing a black man who was walking away from him, emptied his gun in him, and he's he going to get out next year. He got a second chance. He got a second chance at living after he took a life. I ain't never seen Larry Hoover caught on camera doing shit. And he been locked up for 50 years and got hundreds more to go if we don't stand in this fight together with him as well. Because I'm a gangster and I ain't never had to kill nobody. All my respect that I got is came from good stuff, fighting for my people every single day. Not just when something bad happened. Not when just stuff is trending on the news. I'm out here 365 days educating my people, feeding my people, employing my people. I'm doing that. That's what being a gangster is. It's not gangster for us to stand back and watch the the the, the uh, oh shit, I'm stuttering. 
and watch po politicians not be held accountable for the position that they got voted in. We got to make them do their work. We got to make the police serve and protect them. If they don't, we got to rise up against them. Are y'all really ready for that, though? Oh, yeah. That's the question that we got to ask ourselves. What are you willing to risk? Is you willing to put your life on the line for this? Or is this just something for you to do right now so you can feel empowered? My life is on the line for this. My life is on the line for everything that I step out my house that I believe in. I'm going to see that shit all the way through. So if y'all serious about this, y'all got me. If y'all not serious, start wasting our time. Because there's a lot of people out here that's willing to die for this. And if you not, stop wasting our time. I'm holding my people accountable. They got to see us come at them full force with all of us being on the same accord. If we're not on the same accord, we wasting our time. So unless you're going to get with the program, just stop wasting our time. Thank you. Amen. How many says? How many says? How many says? Hey, listen, I really believe in the power of like spoken word. That's something like I really believe in, right? Since I was like a shorty shorty, I believe like in what you say will come into fruition. Like you can manifest stuff with your mind and your mouth, right? So I want y'all to say something. I want us, I don't, what I don't want us to do is say Jason Van Dyke is going to get out next year, okay? So don't ever say that. Don't ever say he's eligible to get out, but don't ever say he's going to get out. Because as long as I'm alive, I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure he doesn't get out. So say John Lost. John Lost. John Lost. Do what's right. Do what's right. John Lost. Do what's right. Do what's right. John Lost. Do what's right. Do what's right. Press charges. Oh, Jason Van Dyke. Press charges. Press charges. Oh, Jason Van Dyke. Hey, the next brother we gonna have come up, man. A very influential brother, man. Love this brother. I'm a dis uh, when I was let's say I was raised as a descendant of uh, the street tribe uh, that he used to uh, participate in. Okay, so uh, this brother is a professor. Oh, that East Western man, profound brother, man. I love listening to him talk, man. A great lecturer, a great intellect, man. Um, definitely a friend of the old man. And one of the reasons we out here, I'm gonna let him talk with no further ado. I'm gonna introduce everybody to Mr. Professor Benny Lee. Y'all make some noise for yes, him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let me say, where do our wrongs end? And our rights begin. Where does our wrong end? And our rights begin. You know, I've been knowing Brother Larry Hoover since 1978. Me and him was indicted as a result of the rebellion down in Pontiac Prison back in 1978. And it was then they tried to scapegoat him, saying that he was the conspirators that thought that rebellion. And I know personally that he walked off that yard and said, every gangster disciple in this penitentiary, we ain't with this, what they talking about that. But they tried to scapegoat him and even charge him with conspiracy out of all of us. And they still using the same tactics. You know, when do his wrong end and his rights begin? Yes, sir. You know, I said, yeah, at one time I was a high rank, a matter of fact, I was the national ambassador for the entire vice lord nation at one time. Yes, sir. Yes, and I sir. rose up now to become a professor at a university. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. We got to look at, you know, policing come in this country as a result of slave trackers come on. tracking down slaves. Come on, come on. Right, you hear what I'm saying? No, That's how policing started in this country. Slave trackers tracking down slaves, and that gave birth to policing in this country. Yes, sir. When you look at the 13th Amendment of the United States Constitution, that's when Abraham Lincoln was moving to free slaves. They passed it in Congress in 1865, and it says that no person of U.S. citizenship should be subject to slavery or indentured servitude unless otherwise convicted of a crime. So what that means is if you got a conviction, then you still consider a slave. Yes, and on, even now. after that, they come, come up with what you call a convict leasing system, come on, come on. where they would indict you, lock you up, and then lease you out for free labor. Yes, sir. Right? Today, they call that community service. Yes, sir. Yeah, you got to understand history. You know, and it was Frederick Douglass that argued when they passed the 14th Amendment, yeah, you freed us, but you didn't make us citizens. So that's when he pushed and became the driving force behind them passing the 14th Amendment to say we're entitled to due process of the law. 
And this is what we're dealing with now when it comes to our brother Larry Hoover. He's entitled to due process of the law. Yes, sir. And what we got to do, we got to get organized. Yes, sir. See, I'm part of a movement. I organize all formerly incarcerated convicted people and their families. Do you know in Illinois, over 4.1 million people in Illinois are convicted felons? Come on. And just imagine if all of us decide to become registered voters yes, sir. and vote yes, for the same candidate. Just like we that. got the power just to like determine that. who the government is. Just like now, that. when you look at the prison system in Illinois, over 70% of the people in Illinois prison are repeated offenders, meaning these are people that's been there before. Yes, over 60% of them come from six neighborhoods in Chicago. Austin, where I come from, has the largest concentration of former incarcerated and convicted people in this state. Yes, sir. Just last September alone, 300 people got paroled back to Austin in a 30-day window. Where are the jobs and the housing for those people? I ain't talking about citywide. Say so this is the thing we got to do. We got to get organized. We got a cause. Yes, sir. Right? We got a cause. Like Martin Luther King said in his principles of nonviolence. Yes, we got to attack the forces of evil, yes, not sir. the person doing the evil. That's right. See, we got to attack these systems. That's right. Because see, as long as the systems remain intact, you're going to always have a Van Dyke. You're going to have always have a birds that protect them and give them pinches when they do wrong. Yeah. So we got to challenge this country. When do our wrongs end? Yes, sir. And our rights begin? Yes, sir. I'm going to make some sense here. Yes, sir. And see, the sad thing about it, I done been out here 37 years after being down in the joint, three years on death row, facing 15 counts of murder, two or 10 murder, for only one thing, being identified as the chief of the vice lord. That was the only uh, evidence they had against me and the only evidence they had against Larry Hoover because he was the chief of the gangster disciple. And they used these tactics, these old tactics. This is called Southern Strategies where they teach people that we bad people and influence other white people that don't trust us. That's right. But at the same time, they use Boogie the Willie Lynch theory to cause us not to trust each other, That's but right. trust the outsiders, yes, sir. right? So we got to do like uh, Dr. Uh, Eusenia Perkins said, our communities are colonized. Yes, sir. We talking about uh, ghetto colonization. Yes, sir. Well, yes, people sir. coming in our communities and colonize them. Yes, sir. We don't run these communities. No, sir. Who own majority of the businesses in our community? Yes, Who own most of the buildings in our communities? Yes, Who passing legislation in our communities? Yes, these legislators ain't nothing but as Malcolm X called handkerchief head ass niggas. Yes, right? You know, just like in slavery, yes, they had, they had yes, overseers. And that's what they are. They're overseers keeping these laws, and I'm going to say this and shut up. I lived through the 1968 riots, and I saw them burn down Roosevelt Road. And you go down Roosevelt right now, some of them same vacant buildings that was burned down in 68 are still vacant today. I seen it when, it when the Jews controlled Madison Street. When they moved out, blacks didn't move in and take over, and now it's full of Koreans and every other kind of fun. Dr. College, Wilson talked about that in 1931 in Miseducation of the Negro. Our foreigners study our value system and they come in our community and set up things and sell it to us. And we go for it every time. We got to be educated, we got to raise the community the world, and that's the first step of this movement. Get your facts together first. Get your facts together, and you can do this as an individual. Get your facts, and once you get the facts, then you raise the awareness of the community, your family, and people you in relationship with. And you can do that as an individual. And then once you get your facts together, you gotta be committed to follow the fight through. And then once you get committed, now you are ready to negotiate with some facts, right? So I'm gonna hand the mic over and just say, free Larry Hoover, free Chief Malik, the free Mongoose, all these so-called they call criminals, but these are our political prisoners. Thanks for allowing me to share this mic. Yes, Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, how many Thank shots? Sixteen shots. How many shots? Sixteen shots. Hey, listen.
Hey, we want to be respectful of everybody's time and y'all coming out. So for all the speakers, I really know y'all got some real impactful nuggets to drop with us, but just try to limit it, limit it to like two minutes so we can try to squeeze in because we got one special guest speaker at the end of this. I really, really want him to speak. He's also a co-reason um, of why we are here today, okay? So, Ashe, say Ashe, Ashe. amen, Ashe. something, okay? Ashe. Two minutes. Make some noise for our other influential brother, Gator Bradley. That don't count. That don't start with my two minutes. <laughs> but one thing I'm going to let y'all know about this here. I'm going to say it in two plus two. First off, I understand all this political thing that you're talking about and talking about being about change. But I understand this. The politics came from behind the wall for criminal justice reform. To bring it out to activists. They took the legislators that's in office. So I want you to know this. I'm here because I hear about all the wrong women getting shot and killed by police officers. But let's talk about Black Lives Matter for real. Let's talk about all the black women that's getting shot in our goddamn community by all the black motherfuckers. Let's talk about that. Let's stand up and shut that down. Let's shut that down in our community. It's time for that too. You want to get respect to get new things to make change? Stand up and say, stop the killing of innocent women and children in our community. Yes, sir. We got the most mass murders, mass shootings in our community of blacks by other blacks. You come here talking about the politicians. Ain't no damn politicians. Let's get on that for real. That's a real social change. Now back to the matter at hand. This plaza, we've been fighting for righteous, fair prosecution and sentencing for Larry Hoover for over 25 years. Because of brothers like Larry Hoover and others behind the wall, they made Democrats and Republicans come together and pass a law that they signed. The fact of the matter of fairness is what we're screaming for. Redemption is what we're screaming for. Humanity is what we're screaming for. Not this nonsense. It's the encompassing of everything. So I'm saying this is what you do. You share this. It was nine people that got convicted with Larry Hoover. In the name of fairness of the system, six of them are free because of fairness in the system. That's what this is about. Fairness in the system, redemption. We know Biden was the one that sponsored the 1994 crime bill because of redemption. We redeemed him and we elected him. So Larry is in charge, should have that same redemption what we talking about here. And I'm saying this, when I see his son, when I see his grandson, when I see his wife, when I see Larry Hoover Jr.'s wife. When I see what Larry Hoover said in the resurrection, he spoke about this day that we're standing here today. Yes, sir. I don't talk to him from 97 until 2014, saying the same thing. Yes, sir. What we're standing on. And hey, he's no longer the chief of gangster disciples. Yes, sir. He's no longer a chairman. He's a human being that demand redemption and fairness. That's what we're screaming about. Yes, and it can happen. Yes, so I'm saying this. Everybody got a right to run for whatever office they want to run for. But understand this. If you get elected, you just become 
a freshman and you have no power. You have no power. Those blacks that in office went through hell and high water had to get seniority. And I'm saying this, and I'm bad on wise to recall what I've said. Because in 1995, I spoke by realness, but I didn't understand the power of attitude. And when I see Larry Hoover Jr. son tell me because of the history that he listened to and learned and said, Gator, you could have been mayor Come if on. you don't say that you was a gangster disciple. Come on. Come on. This is facts that we live in. Come on. This is what we're talking about. Come on. He's 13 years old. Yes, sir. I got a great grandson that's 13 years old. And it's imperative for my great grandson to meet Larry Hoover's grandson so they never become enemies. That's what we own. So, if you want to talk what's real, start with letting you know in your community that any individual, any individual that ain't about the code was that means zero tolerance for sister shootings and killings. Yes, sir. Zero tolerance wow, for the rape of women and children. Yes, sir. Yes, Zero sir. tolerance yes, for the sir. abuse and the robbing of elders. Yes, sir. No then you ain't saying nothing. It starts there. Yes, and I want to say to God be the glory. There's Walsh Gator Barely, and that's my story. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen, Amen. Thank you, Gator. Thank you. We're going to bring in our, our next sister up to the stage, Albany. Make some noise. Hello everyone, uh, I'm going to hope to get through this, I'm representing my org, uh, my name is Abini Trotter and I'm the organizer within the Ch Chicago Alliance Against Racist Political Repression and once again it's with great pleasure and honor that I am delivering the speech on behalf of my org, Harper. Harper started 44 years ago with the Free Angela Davis Movement. Uh, we know why we're all here today, under circumstances that should have never been possible in the first place. A 17-year-old black boy, Laquan McDonald, had his life taken away from him with 16 shots through his body. With a dirty cop, Jason Van Dyke, that is now trying to act as though if he is some sort of political prisoner. Not only does this city have a history of defiling and destroying our men and women, this land is a settler colonial project. Come on. As our indigenous brothers and Come sisters on. are still a force Come on. on reservations. That Excuse part. me, that part. deaf camps. That yeah. part. We also have the CPD, which it has relations to slave patrols. Come on. That do that do what they always do to us, oppress yeah. us, take our children away before they ever had a chance of living a life of legacy of their own accord. Not only that, but now we have Rahm Emanuel with the nerve and zero remorse of trying to act as though he's anything, he's done anything good for this city, deserves praise, recognition, or any reward. How deplorable, how despicable it is to think that he should represent anything as an international ambassador to Japan. It is not only a slap in the face of the black community as a whole, but all to oppress nations worldwide. Come on, come Ron on. Emanuel is not only a racist black, is not only racist to black and brown people in Chicago, but he's a Zionist that has helped support the oppression of the Palestinians as they fight for their right for self determination on their land as they are bombed and forced to face an ongoing genocide. Let us not forget that Rahm Emanuel's father served in a terrorist organization that targeted British and Palestinian civilians. Now, let us not forget that Boeing's headquarters have been in Chicago since 2001. While he has not initiated a contract, he has not questioned nor ended it. Boeing is, is one of the top five war profiteers and one of Israel's biggest investors. They use those same weapons that they helped, uh, that they, that those, Excuse me. They use those same weapons that Boeing helped to manufacture to kill Palestinian children daily, daily in Hazza, on stolen land that has been ongoing for decades. Rod Emanuel closed down mental health facilities in black and brown communities in Chicago to save the city three million. 
which he nearly paid the same amount to Boeing just so they could have their fancy big bo big building downtown. Come on, come on. Make no mistake, these economic connections are real. Back, this back, is why, back. to our movement for our community control of the police, we fought Rahm Emanuel. And when it was exposed that he covered up the murder, the murder video, we campaigned to ensure that the killer cop, that Jason Van Dyke, was indicted and convicted. We led rallies and went to the courthouse from the start to the from the start of the trial, yeah. and then brought 500 to march down on the day of the conviction. We fought on today after we won 36 members of the city council to vote for the empowering communities for public safety ordinance. We are now campaigning to help establish an intern commission that will help that will have a, uh, that will have a policy making power as we as well as the appointment of a COPA head. Next, we'll push for the referendum for direct elections of that commission and prepare for elections to the council right in right each right of the 22 police districts to empower our community to hold CBD accountable and to enact them to alternatives to police involvement and mental health crisis in other areas. All power to the people! Yeah. All power to the people. Thank you, sister. Now we're going to be joined by our brother, Art. Make some noise for Art! <laughs> man, I, I, hey, I appreciate y'all coming out, man. Let's go. I, 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 I didn't change my speech three, four times standing here just listening to the other speakers. But what I want to say that they didn't say is nobody put a face on who Larry Hoover is. Come on. Nobody made the connection between what Larry Hoover means to us and what Laquan and his murder meant to us. Back. And so I'm going to make that connection for y'all. Because I was once a, a 17 year old boy who could have came to met the same fate as Laquan McDonald had I not met a Larry Hoover. And when I say that, and I, I say that with so much sincereness, I was doing everything you could do in the streets of Chicago. But the one person that came to my aid and sat me down and talked to me was Larry Hoover. And I'm talking about not. And he was, he had his own troubles. He had his own uh, situations he was going through. And he took time to call me down to Stateville and say, look, you got to stop what you're doing. You got a future. And, and, and those conversations are the reasons I stand right here today, right now, after raising four or five kids, sending them all to college, one at Yale, starting a non-for-profit service, helping my community. Uh, me and Will collaborating as well as me and a leader on a lot of things to stop violence in Chicago. So people need to understand the connection and they need to understand who Larry Hoover is. And, and, and I want y'all that don't know him, man, do the research. He, he, they say he's uh, a political prisoner for a real reason because he can impact the lives of millions. He did that from prison. He's been locked up over 50 years and what we really want to do, and what I really want to do, is highlight all the people that he impacted, not only in prison who came out, and there's a few in this crowd who went on to do great things, get degrees, write books, raise families, but the people who didn't go, like myself. It's a lot of us riding around in police cars, attorneys, not against the law, but supporting and upholding fair criminal justice. And that needs to be highlighted because I think most of the time when you when they try to mention his name, they want to tell you all the bad things they suspect he did. But I'm here to tell you about all the great things he did. And we're going to bring out a lot of great people. It's, it's, it's judges sitting on benches that were influenced by the, the words of Larry Hoover. It's attorneys in front of the